Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, this is a PhD in the Netherlands uh, online series where we invite um, Indonesian students, academicians, um, and researchers who are doing their PhD in the Netherlands to share their PhD experience with us. Uh, welcome to our seventh session. This info session is brought to you by Academic Transfer and Fixed Service Asia. My name is Afwan. I'm, I will be moderating the session for the next 60 minutes. Before I introduce you to our guest, I'd like to give you a brief information about our organization. I hope you're able to see uh, my screen. Well, uh, NUFIC is a non-profit organization. Uh, in the Netherlands, uh, we are appointed officially to handle international cooperation in education uh, and funded by the, the government of Dutch and the European Union. NUFIC has three regional offices. Uh, NUFIC Studies Asia is one of them and several project offices that design and manage capacity development programs, scholarship programs, and knowledge collaboration projects. Um, our activities in NUFIC uh, Southeast Asia, uh, among others, are uh, facilitate NL knowledge through scientific research and even collaboration between the Netherlands and Southeast Asia. We support international internationalization of education to promotion of a study in the Netherlands. We also manage scholarship programs uh, such as Orange Knowledge Program, Orange Tulip Scholarship Program, and a joint scholarship with LPDP. We support outgoing mobility in Indonesia through WheelWave program. Uh, and at last but not least, we connect and support Netherlands knowledge community through networking events such as NL Knowledge, uh, NL uh, Alumni Career Fair, Orange Talk, Workshop, Discussion, and so forth. Uh, well, speaking of uh, PhD in the Netherlands, uh, the minimum duration is uh, four years, including uh, research and writing a dissertation. Uh, normally, PhD in the Netherlands is not uh, regarded as a study program. It is um, a serious research and often in paid employment and contract. Uh, PhD in the Netherlands is offered uh, by certain research universities and uh, often uh, advertised on job boards or websites, such as academic transfer. Uh, as you can see on my slides, this is the preview of the academic transfer website uh, where you can find the um, opening position for PhD offered by universities or research universities in the Netherlands. Uh, general admission criteria, uh, among others, are uh, solid background in the theory and methods. Um, also, you have to have recognized master degree and a good command of English. Uh, in general, uh, you can find your PhD position by uh, using, uh, by employed by the PhD awarding institution with a fellowship or grant awarded by supporting body such as LPDP or with a sponsorship for, from your employer. Uh, keep, keep in mind that uh, some Dutch institution charge fees of enrollment, supervision and access to their um, facilities uh, such as laboratories. Uh, in collaboration with um, academic transfer, uh, Nufik Sardis Asia conduct a PhD recruitment this year on October 7, 2023. It is an offline event in Jakarta. Uh, there are eight uh, professors or uh, recruiters that, who will be attending this edition. If you are interested to, to get involved, all you have to do is uh, visit the website, register, complete all the requirements to create a compelling uh, profile to impress the delegates or supervisor or um, recruiters. If you are selected, uh, you will have a chance to have a discussion to discuss your um, research proposal, research idea with the Dutch professor in one-on-one -on -one session in Jakarta. Uh, tomorrow is the deadline. Uh, so uh, if you are if you already uh, registered to the website, uh, please complete your registration. Uh, 
the aim of this PhD recruitment is to look for candidates with uh, funding sources, uh, personal scholarship or others. But if you have, uh, if you don't have PhD funding yet, we still recommend you to register and complete the required documents because it doesn't rule out the possibility that there will be funding opportunities to research position vacancies uh, opened by Dutch higher education institution or other fundings. Okay, um, our other upcoming events uh, on October 2023 is week of Indonesia, Netherlands, sorry, uh, Indonesia, Netherlands Education and Research or WINNER. This year, uh, we aim to utilize the rich history of collaboration in research and education between Indonesia and the Netherlands. The highlight of WINNER this year is to bring together the interested, interested public from education practitioners to policymakers in Indonesia Dutch collaboration to discuss the importance of regional impact and share ideas on improving knowledge connectivity. If you would like more information, please visit the website www.winner.or.id. Uh, and feel free to connect with us through our email or our socials if you still have any question or need more information. And now here's our special guest, uh, Medina Safira. Uh, Medina is doing her PhD, double degree, in Department of Cultural Geography, a Faculty of Special uh, Sciences, University of Honingen. Uh, currently, she is doing her research on digitalization, rural entrepreneurship, and resilience in transforming rural areas. You can write down your questions on a chat box. We will answer them after her presentation. Without further ado, please welcome Medina Safira. Uh, okay, thank you, Mas Afwan, for introducing me. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm doing well now. Still doing a field work in Indonesia, but it's almost finished. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> are you ready to share your experience with us? Uh, yes, I guess. <laughs> okay, Medina, I... now no? the stage is yours. Okay, thank you. Um... Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you, Nufik Southeast Asia, for having me on this evening session. And as we know, today's session is about uh, sharing experiences and personal stories as a PhD in, uh, in the Netherlands. And this is my first time sharing my experience as a double degree PhD student. So I hope this session can be insightful for you and can be useful for all audiences here. And before I start uh, my presentation, I would like to introduce myself, even though Mas Afan already introduced me uh, earlier. So uh, I'm, I'm the double degree PhD student between the University of Groningen and Bandung Institute of Technology. And uh, now I'm currently on my second year of my PhD program. So I started uh, on the 1st of October, 2022. So it's officially one year. Uh, and now I'm on the second year and uh, I belong to the Department of the Cultural Geography uh, at the University of Groningen. And I have some publications with my supervisor from my home university, from ITB. Two of them are about digitalization in rural areas. So it's more likely uh, about the rural development issues. And the other one is about city branding. So I have a uh, shifting in research interest from the city context to the rural context. Uh, and now I'm more focused on uh, digitalization in the rural context issues for my uh, PhD program. Uh, so let's begin my presentation uh, by asking me a question, uh, why I choose to study in the Netherlands. So since I was in master's program, uh, I am, I'm actively researching about digitalization, or maybe some of us are familiar with digital technology terms and rural entrepreneurial activity. And uh, when I was in master's program, I am actively researching about uh, this issue and I read some relevant literatures. And I noticed there are two scholars or two people that I keep citing for, uh, 
whenever I try to write articles or chapters, and I noticed that uh, their articles were really insightful. And uh, the first one is an assistant professor from the University of Groningen. And the other one uh, is a researcher at uh, one of the research institutions in the UK. So, but I most folk, uh, I mostly read uh, literature from the assistant professor at the University of Groningen. And whenever I read his article, I am thinking and I content contemplating to myself that how can he deliver his ideas? Or how can he deliver his insightful ideas and acknowledge uh, this uh, uh, this uh, gap, this knowledge gap, and contribute to feeling uh, to the development of body of knowledge about digitalization in the global north? So I have a personal mission, I have a personal ambition. If I would like to pursue a PhD degree, I would like to supervise by him. It's specifically, I would like to supervise by him. Uh, and so that's uh, my internal, internal motivation. Uh, and how about the external as aspects? Uh, so I know that there is an opportunity between my home university at ITB uh, and the University of Groningen uh, regarding the joint scholarship. So they have a scholarship for a double degree PhD student and it's a new program just launched now, new, uh, last year. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, like a perfect match between my internal motivation and an um, external uh, opportunity. And also my supervisor from ITB is an alumni from the University of Groningen itself. And he is a colleague of my, uh, he is a colleague of uh, writers that I mentioned in the beginning. So he is a colleague of the of a scholar that actively researching on digitalization issues. So uh, at least I have someone that can introduce me to the potential supervisors uh, at the University of Groningen. So that's how I decided to choose uh, to study in the Netherlands. And then moving on, uh, how can I get a scholarship for this program? Uh, so uh, in 2022, exactly in December 2022, uh, my supervisor from ITB sent an email to the potential supervisor from the University of Groningen saying that uh, he is looking for a collaboration, a future collaboration, and he also introduced me as a potential PhD student. Uh, do you interested in supervi supervising uh, Indonesian PhD students, uh, something like that? And in December 2020, uh, 2020 we also got an informal positive response from the uh, from the potential supervisors at the University of Groningen, and. But we have to keep in mind that they are working on formal response. So even though we already got an informal positive response, we have to wait until finally we receive the formal response from the Kroningen itself. And uh, after that, uh, in 2021, uh, there were some personal circumstances hindering me to adopt, uh, to uh, continue the application process for PhD program. So I decided to postpone everything. I decided to uh, work for the national government. So I move, um, uh, there is a shifting career from academia path to the, the outside academia. I work for the national government for almost one year. And in December 2021, finally, I realized that, that <clears throat> okay, this is time. I have to go back to the academia path again. This is time for me to leave the uh, non-academia path and go back to the university. So I decided to go to go back to the ITB to work as a researcher assistant for my supervisor at ITB. And finally, in April 2022, uh, I submitted uh, all required documents for the regular admission at ITB. So it's uh, it's actually for regular program. It's not for international program. It's not for pursue your PhD in the Netherlands. It's for ITB program. Uh, and the condition in April 2022, my uh, supervisors encouraged me to join uh, a double degree program, even though there was no quota for me. So uh, the head of program of urban and regional planning from my university is already initiated the collaboration with the Faculty of Spatial Sciences uh, from the University of Groningen. And they have four quota for PhD students 
to do to depa uh, to get a scholarship uh, on last year's program. So us. Uh, starting from September 2022 they only have they only have four quota and they already have three incoming PhD uh, three ongoing PhD student from the second year and one new PhD student uh, that registered er earlier than me so I don't have any quota in April but my supervisor keep uh, asking me or keep encourage me just give it a try just give it a try even though we don't know if there is a quota or uh, another spot for you just prepare all documents so in May 2022, uh, I get a decision from my supervisors. Okay, let's just send all the documents that you have to see that uh, you are a potential candidate uh, and uh, we can, we will lobby or we will ne negotiate the uh, University of Groningen to add one more quota. And at the same time, I, I already got a LOA from ITV. So I already accepted as an ITV student. Uh, and then... I still remember that it's really quick process. I need to prepare all documents within two weeks. It's actually, it's 10 days, so it's less than two weeks. Uh, but luckily, I already have proposal in English, so I don't need to translate it. And I also don't need to uh, write from the beginning. I only need to improve some points. And But uh, for me, the challenge is, uh, is I have to take IELTS test because I don't have any English certificate uh, when I have to submit the documents. Uh, so I have to prepare it uh, yeah, within two weeks, uh, about 10 days. And uh, I, I prepare all the documents and I submit it uh, to the Dean of the Faculty of Special Sciences. And then in June 2022, uh, I conducted an online meeting with the potential supervisors from the Groningen with my supervisor from ITB as well to show that uh, hey I'm uh, I'm interested in in researching this topic and I would really appreciate if you can provide any feedbacks uh, something like that so it's initial uh, formal meet uh, initial informal meeting and they also gave a positive response and then I reported to the head of program at ITB to tell him that. Uh, I got a positive response and I really hope and my supervisors also uh, if uh, Kroningen can add one more quota for me. And then after that, one day after that, exactly after the interview with uh, our uh, online meeting with the potential supervisors, the dean of the faculty of spatial scientists sent an email to the head of program uh, of my department at ITB saying that okay we can give Medina a spot for this year program so let's just prepare for the visa and all other administrative things so yeah that's how I get my scholarship I think I can say that I'm very lucky for having this opportunity because at first they don't have any quota but after that uh, regarding uh, considering my applications uh, and uh, yeah uh, how I built an interaction with the potential supervisors they decided to add one more quota for me so that's how I get a scholarship. So basically, my scholarship uh, or my funding sources come from two university because it's a double degree program. So I spent the first two years, uh, starting from 2022 until 2024 uh, at the University of Groningen. And it will be funded by University of Groningen, including living allowance per month and also research budget, fieldwork budget, and printing budget. And uh, but they have different system between PhD in the Netherlands and in Indonesia. So in Indonesia, PhD is not considered as an as a job. So it's not an employed vacancy. It's not an employed position. Uh, so the status of the PhD itself is considered as a student. So you have to pay tuition fee. And for me, the tuition fee for at ITB is covered by ITB itself because I got a scholarship, uh, internal scholarship. And in addition, I also can get a uh, additional fieldwork budget, but it's uh, it depends on the research plan of your supervisors because the fieldwork budget from the university or from the national government is uh, usually competitive among uh, lecturers in the in one university. So it depends on uh, your uh, supervisor's plan, but there is an opportunity to get uh, additional funding for fieldwork. Uh, so that's about funding sources. 
uh, okay it seems like i already talk a lot but it uh, but actually I, i will just start explaining the general overview of being a phd student in the netherlands so um being phd student in the netherlands it means that uh, you have to write a thesis book as a graduation requirement uh, you have to defend your thesis you have to write a thesis book including or consisting of at least four publishable articles so it means your articles doesn't have to be submitted but it's worth to publish it can be submitted or it can be under review process and even better it's it can be accepted so your articles doesn't have to be accepted but uh, it's worth to uh, publish but it also depends on your agreement between your you and your your supervisors whether they require you to have all pub published articles or not but uh, in co commonly uh, it's not uh, all published but it's worth to publish and we also have different system between indonesia and, and netherlands so in indonesia uh, including in itb a phd student have to write a monograph series so it's like a structural uh, various chapters uh, with an introduction and conclusion as well as uh, as they their thesis so it's different system different format but as a double degree phd student i have to follow the kerning and format so i have to write a thesis including at least four articles uh, and during the process as a double degree phd uh, i need to obtain 15 ects uh, 15 ects during uh, the first two years and it can be obtained by joining courses and also workshops or maybe other research related activities such as presenting at the international conference or maybe organizational tasks uh, if faculty has a kind of program like that and also uh, the these these credits will be transferred to the home university but it depends on the regulations of each university but basically it's it has it will be uh, transferred to the home university in my case the 15 ECTs will be transferred to the to ITB and in addition as a PhD student in the Netherlands you also will have monitoring interview and the first year will be the busiest year for monitoring I guess because you will have three months interview uh, but it's actually not really interview because it's most uh, for um, completion of training and supervision plan so a PhD student in the Netherlands will have a document called STSP or uh, re referring to training and supervision plan. It covers all your plans for uh, four years, including what courses you will take, uh, what conferences you will attend, how you allocate your research budget, and your supervisors will also decide whether your plan is realistic or not. So yeah, it's, it serves as a, gui a guideline for you and your supervisors. And then after that, on six months, uh, you will also have uh, informal talk to with supervisors. Uh, it's usually discussed about the agreements, what have uh, what points you will achieve in before nine months interview. So you have agreements with the supervisors. Uh, yeah, is there any points that you have to achieve before nine months interview and etc. And the most important milestone for PhD in the Netherlands, I guess, is a nine months interview, or we call it as go no go interview. So it's deciding whether you will continue your PhD, it means go, or you will stop your PhD, or you will not continue your PhD, it means no go. So it's on nine months interview, and after that you will also have an annual interview, uh, first year, second year third year and the final year is uh, i think it's same as the defense the final defense uh so talking about my experience on the first year uh so as i mentioned earlier i have to write uh at least four articles and how can i formulate uh, or or how can i plan uh, my research uh for four years uh, first, I formulate one main research question, namely, to what extent is digital technology innovatively used in rural entrepreneurship and how does this innovation create a broader impact 
And then after that, I formulated uh, this research question into four sub-research questions. And I will illustrate this uh, connection or interrelation between each question into one figure, like uh, illustrated in the slides, to help me track uh, whether the research question, uh, whether the interdependencies of each research question can answer the main research question. So that's how I work for my PhD project. And how is my first year experience? Um, I can say in one sentence that I really enjoy my PhD, uh, my, my first year experience as a PhD student is really um, the most insightful learning experience. Okay, it's two sentences, but it's, uh, I mean, the, uh, the first year experience is really insightful, is the most insightful learning experience that I've been, uh, yeah, that, that I have for now. Uh, maybe if PhD students from the third or, or fourth year hear about this, they will give you a comment. Yeah, you're still in the first year, that, that's why you still enjoy it, but I really mean it. I really enjoy being a PhD student uh, because you can find your... Uh, your research path, you you can discover new ideas, delivering your ideas, uh, connecting with other people from other countries, talking about your uh, research interests, and it's it's built your character as well. And how is my first year uh, from October to September 2023? So I already obtained 15.3 ECTs. It's more than enough actually, but I really like taking courses here. Because it's fundamental course, it's not only about writing, it's not only about research method that will you use uh, in the in your research, but it's also about how uh, to being a, a good PhD student, how to deliver your research ideas and make it uh, and deliver a greater impact, uh, something like that. So it's not only about uh, the materials itself. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, I I have to write at least four articles, and I already submitted the first article, and is still under revision process to be submitted to resubmit it in this month. And I also already attended uh, two international conferences. The first one is in Glasgow about rural entrepreneurship, and the other one is about uh, rural geographies. And this conference is uh, the organizing committee for this conference is my supervisors. So I also participated and volunteered in this project, in this conference. It's really new experience for me because at the same time you have to present your ideas, but you also have to help technical matters uh, during the conference and people recognize you as a volunteer and a speaker. So it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's new experience for me. And also for sure, I also, also already passed a go no go interview because it's, uh, it's more than nine months for me now. Uh, and I got a very good result. Uh, and for now, I almost finished data collection for second and third articles. Uh, will be finished maybe in one or two days after this, we, until 3 or 4 October. And then I will be back to the Netherlands in upcoming weeks. So yeah, that's my first year experience, a summary of uh, my uh, experience as a PhD student in the Netherlands during the first year. And I know that PhD is about uh, delivering and writing your ideas indeed, but uh, after attending international conferences, I realized that, okay, PhD is not only about your writing, your presentation, but it's only about your, how can you build a network with other people? How can you find a research path, uh, collecting new ideas from others and have meaningful interactions with other uh, researchers? And remember that when I was when I start this presentation, I told you that I have personal motivation that I would like to supervise by one person that actively researching about digitalization in the global north. And did I meet him? Yes, I meet him. He is the one who is uh, on left side. He is my supervisor now. So I supervised by him. I made it, uh, and we will still continue working with him uh, for the next three years, I guess. And the other one, the on the right side, uh, who took a selfie with me, is a person that I also told you earlier. He is the one. She is the one that worked for the UK institution. Uh, they are both are uh, who took a selfie with me are scholars or are a uh, writer of the articles that I frequently cited in my writing and my chapters or in my articles. So. 
it's really really amazing experience to have an interaction in person with them uh, and even she also give a comment give a compliment when i deliver my ideas oh you're uh, i didn't expect that uh, global south countries will have experience like this something like that so it's really amazing it feels like you have something that you adore you have a person uh, you have an idol in academic world and you can meet them in person through international conference so it's really amazing and doing phd is also about managing yourself i know that we we uh, we have our supervisors but still we have to decide what action uh, what actions to take for our research because we learn to be to uh, independent researcher so we have to manage ourselves we have to learn to manage ourselves and also it's about networking with other people from different departments from different background different countries so it's not only about uh, building a relationship with your supervisor, but it's also about building your relationship with people surrounding you during uh, during your PhD uh, program. Uh, okay, moving on to the most important part, I guess, tips and tricks for anyone that who likes to pursue a PhD. Uh, first thing first, I guess PhD is not for everyone and not doing one might be a better option considering interest and passion, financial considerations, career goals, and support system. If you're not passionate about the subject or the topic, uh, doing a PhD will be overwhelming because it's a long journey. And also for people that have a financial dependent or someone dependent for, for you, some someone dependent on, someone depend on you for financial aspects, you also have to take care of this. And, uh, depending on your career goals, if your career career goals doesn't require you to have a PhD degree, then you can take other options like a certificate or a certification, technical certification, or as a, a kind of like that. And having support system during your PhD journey is really important. So I really hope that we are surrounded by good support system during our PhD journey. And if you decide to pursue a PhD uh, degree, I will recommend, if based on my experience, I will recommend uh, some points or some tips and tricks. Uh, first, uh, regarding the research topic, choose a topic that you are passionate about. Uh, as I said earlier, because PhD is a long journey, you will think about it for at least four years, a whole day since you wake up until you go to bed again. It's like investing much time and energy into the subject and you will find yourself contemplating and working on this topic. So make sure it's something that really excites and engage you. And for the supervisors, choose the supervisors whose research interests align with yours. So make sure that they can guide you effectively. And it will be better if you have someone that can introduce you to the potential supervisors. So you can have an initial communication and you can think whether he or she can become a guide of can become a good mentor for you and foster a respectful working relationship. And I think from my perspective, choosing a supervisor is also about a mutual decision. So it's not only about you choose them, but it's only about, it, it's all it's a, a also about they choose you. So it's mutual decision. And for me, after one year being a PhD student, I know it's really still little experience, but, uh, I would like to say that choosing a research topic and supervisors is like choosing a life, life partner. You will be investing much time and energy for this. So make sure that you choose a right person and right topic. And for technical things, if you already secure your funding, please uh, do immediately check secure your housing as well because it's quite difficult to find place in the Netherlands. You can ask someone from Indonesia that live in your city as well. Because usually, uh, if SM goes for me in Kroningen, there are some Indonesian people that have an apartment and they will rent two or one bedrooms to other Indonesian students. So you can ask them uh, through informal communication. And also you can ask graduate school because usually university has a different, uh, different slot for housing stud student housing for PhD student. And you also can use several websites to find accommodation. 
And for visa, uh, I think you don't have to worry about this because university will facilitate you, including you uh, as a PhD that will bring your partner or your children to the Netherlands. And last but not least, uh, PhD is a long journey. It's like marrying your topic for three to four years. So you should always have a reason to love and be committed to your PhD project. Best of luck on our PhD journey. And I'm really open to any discussions or questions after this. And thank you. Hi, Marina. Thank you for a really complete presentation. Um, I was really impressed. I have it really impressed. Um, so you said that a PhD is a long journey. Yeah, yeah I marrying, guess. marrying to your topic for four <laughs> years. So thank you for sharing. Maybe let's say the very first chapters of your journey with us. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, we're going to answer the the questions uh, from the uh participants on the chat box. Um, the, our first question is coming from Faki Yersiadi. Um, is there any similar similar program for another faculty in ITB? Um, okay, as I uh, okay, I, I will just answer yeah, it directly, yeah, right? Okay, yeah. uh, as I know, there are. Uh, I think for now the the collaboration or the cooperation is only between our faculty, School of Architecture and Planning and Policy Development, with the Faculty of Spatial Sciences. I'm not sure if the if there is any uh, similar program in the other faculty at ITB because it's really a new program. It's just launched last year, so I think it's just, for now it's only limited for our, our my faculty, School of Architecture and Planning and Policy Development. Okay. Or do you know any other um Indonesian university? Oh, Indonesian yeah. university. Huh? Uh yeah, I think uh University of Groningen have a collaboration with uh Universitas Gajah Mada. Uh yeah, I think Universitas Gajah Mada. And I'm not sure if they have a collaboration with University of Indonesia, but they have a collaboration for bachelor program, but I'm not sure for masters or a doctoral program, but they have a, a collaboration for bachelor with uh, University of Indonesia and also University of Gajah Mada. And for the master programs uh, as well, for the University of Gajah Mada. Okay, so with Gajah Mada, right? Yeah. Um, our next question is coming from Renata. Uh, thank you for your details explanation. And uh, she would like to ask, what should we do if if I want to take, um, what is it? PhD uh, in doctoral studies, but lack of research, or are there oh. other ways apart from research publications? Because okay. earlier you mentioned that you should yeah. have for a publication, maybe draft or ideas. Yeah. Oh, okay. A uh, PhD is about writing your ideas, so it's totally fine if you don't have any, any publications before you start your PhD, because the main of the PhD program itself is to write your ideas, to deliver your ideas uh, through uh, art, published articles. So it's really, it's totally fine if you don't have any publications, but uh, the most important thing that you have uh, motivations or you have commitment to learn uh, on writing, on writing uh, research academic uh, yeah, on writing academic articles because it's quite different with other types of writing, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Um, another question is coming from uh, Irwan. Now, uh, what is the biggest challenge on your PhD journey? Or maybe you can just say, um, what is the biggest challenge on doing a double degree program? Okay, Um. interesting. <laughs> um. I have to say that the biggest challenge for me as a double degree PhD student is uh, both universities have different system and regulations. So sometimes if we take, uh, for example, we have to take a research method course and then uh, the home university said, yeah, you can transfer it. And then after that, 
uh, they can uh, have uh, they can change their mind and say oh no i think we cannot transfer it you have to take it again uh, at home university so something like that they have different regulations they have different uh, policies and i mean you have to adapt with two different system learning systems uh, and for examination or for interview you you usually have to do it twice with different different system so it's really challenging because it's consuming your time and energy but there's a consequence as a phd student as a double degree phd student so yeah okay thank you medina yeah um another question from nanda hoyronisa how do you think about Indonesian people opportunity for applying PhD as employee in the Netherlands? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about this, but I think uh, I know some people from Indonesia as well that uh, can pursue or get a position, employed position in the Netherlands. Uh, and it's not as difficult as that, as long as you meet the requirements. So it's really possible uh just uh looking for information about the requirements and try to apply because they i mean they are not uh differing you whether you are dutch or non-dutch applicants applications so it will be the same uh process admission process so just give it a try it's it's possible because uh i know some people that uh, have uh employed position in the netherlands as a patient employed uh, position all right. Uh, thank you. I hope that answers the question from Nanda Hoyonisa. Uh, next question is coming from Sasa. Uh, Medina, how can you publish your first article very fast on March 2023? Is it a research article or review article? Uh, it's not actually, uh, it hasn't been published yet. It hasn't, it, it has been submitted and it has, uh, I already give, give, uh, I already get a, uh, editors and reviewers comments so it's still under the revision process but how can it uh, how can i submit it so fast because uh, i have uh, data that i can use for writing the first article so i don't have to wait for the field work in the second year during my phd program so that's that's how i can get uh, my first article done in march 2023 okay um sasa is still questioning you said okay. you're doing data collection and will be finished in one or two days. Or maybe it's related okay. with your uh, research topic. What yeah. are the data you collected in Indonesia and how do you collect the data? Uh, so uh, I'm researching about how digitalization or digital technology can be used uh, by the rural communities. So I have to talk with them in person. I have to interview with uh, the rural communities. So. I collected data from the rural communities uh, to ask them a question, how they can use digital technology. Are they familiar with digital technology? Is there any challenges or obstacles uh, facing uh, when you start to use digital technology? Is there any help from other person that can uh, that can help you to learn about digital technology? So it's a kind like, of like that. And uh, it's, uh, it's primary data, so I collected all of data from the interview. And I also stayed with uh, villagers. So I stayed in, uh, I, I didn't stay in the hotel. I stay with the with people, so I sleep in. It's a kind of at least semi-ethnographic. So that's how I collect the data for my articles, for my second and third articles. All right, um, I hope that answers the question from Sasa. Arif Juwito um, is asking, is it possible to change the research topic during the PhD program? I mean, when you're running your PhD and doing your PhD program. Uh, yeah, it's 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 possible because uh, I think our research topic will not be fixed until finally we defend it. I mean, it's still changing every day. Every every time you're doing your research, it 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 can be changing every day regarding your research question as well, but it doesn't significantly change. So it's still in the scope or same uh, field. Uh, so it's not like shifting from A to B, but it can be uh, more specific about, uh, it can be more specific or it can be 
uh, shifting your focus, but it's still on the same field. So it's not really different from what you propose and what will you defend uh, at the end. Uh, so yeah, that that's my opinion because I because uh, from my experiences, uh, I already changed what I write in the proposal in the first three months, and what I'm looking for uh, what I'm looking for on the collection data uh, in this month because yeah, what well, well, it's not significantly cha significantly changed, but uh, I modified some uh, points to be to to be more suitable with uh, the uh, conditions on the Indonesia. Okay, yeah. so uh, along with the process, it's 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 possible for you to modify or change the topic of your research, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay, another question is coming from Sally. Uh, maybe some of her questions already answered. Hi, Badina. What? What has been the most significant challenge you faced during your PhD studies and how did you overcome it? Is there something that was once a challenge but is no longer so? And have you had any experiences related to work culture or ethical dilemmas during your PhD journey? If so, could you please share those experiences with us? Well, the last two questions is so interesting. Okay. <laughs> Um, the most significant challenge, I think, uh, same as I mentioned earlier, because I, uh, I'm a double degree PhD student, so I have to follow rules from two different universities, and they have totally different cultures and regulations. So sometimes I need to work twice, so it means I have to invest much more time and energy in uh complete and um, in finishing all assignments from the both of universities. So that's the challenge uh, for me, but it's a, a consequence as well. So yeah, so I just, okay, uh, it's not a big, it's not a really big problem for me because it's a, uh, because I know that being a PhD student, being a double degree PhD student means that you have to work more compared than others. And an experience related to work culture or ethical dilemmas, um, I'm not sure about this uh, because in the Netherlands itself, uh, we strictly to follow all academic integrity rules. So I'm not sure that uh, is there any related experience with me regarding this issue. And I hope there is, I, I will not experience something like this. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, next question is from Dina. Dina S. If the scholar not pass or no go and then what happened after that? Um, okay, from what I know, there, there are two uh, possibilities. The first one is you go back to your country. So it's, it means you totally quit for, from your PhD. Uh, but the other one, it's uh, change the university or change the supervisors. Because uh, no go doesn't mean that the candidate it uh, doesn't capable. It, it can be because the difference perspectives between the supervisors and the students. So supervisors doesn't want to supervise uh, his or her student. Uh, so maybe they can recommend you to pursue or continue your PhD in other university in the Netherlands or other departments. Uh, from what I know, uh, it's something like that. So yeah, there's, there are two possibilities. Okay. Um... Uh, next question is coming from Maulana in Sanol Kamil. Um, how did you decide your research plan? Is this a part of a project from your supervisor or maybe something? Oh, uh, uh, it's it's um, it's totally from my ideas. I'm uh expanding my research topic from the master's uh, thesis into the broader topic. Uh, for my doctoral program, but it it fits with uh, my supervisor's research expertise, uh, and it aligns with uh, his research agenda. But it's not part of his agenda or his work package, so it's a uh, totally a uh, new project or new ideas. Okay. Um. I think we we don't have any more questions on the chat box, so we're still waiting for your questions. Um, 
I remember earlier on your presentations, you mentioned that you kept um, waiting and writing to the universities regarding your 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 plan to study in in Honingen. How long did you wait, and um, how did you approach them? Is it through your supervisor, or you write your own personal email, or? Oh, um, it's actually only through informal email from mm -hmm. my ITB supervisors to the potential supervisor and the Kroningen. Uh, it's only once, I guess, uh, in December 2020. And after that, uh, yeah, 2021, I postponed all application. And 2022, uh, I waited for a decision from the dean. Uh, and I only reach our my potential supervisors once through online meeting, and uh, no more than no more than uh, that. Yeah. So it's only for it's only once. Okay. Did I answer? Did I interpret your question correctly? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, because uh, I think uh, maybe some people um questioning um is it possible for us to approach the professor by emails uh, oh. by, by our own yeah yeah uh i think it's possible if you if you have a connection i mean someone that can introduce you early uh first it it will be more it's it will be considered as a polite gesture i guess mm -hmm. uh, but yeah you, you can also give it a try to send an email to your uh, potential supervisors uh but yeah maybe it will be better if you have uh, someone that can introduce you first at least at first okay yeah um to our attendees if you still have uh other questions feel free to drop in our chat box uh in your opinion uh medina uh, what is the most difficult requirement uh, for phd that you have to fulfill uh it's for application process or do it during your phd a uh, trajectory the application process okay the application process uh i guess for me it's english certificate because i don't have any experience taking english uh tests uh such as TOEFL or ibt or ielts uh so it's my first time experience taking ielts test and it's short preparations only 10 days so that's the most difficult part for me Mm -hmm. yeah okay so you also had to fulfill that uh english requirements yeah <laughs> okay it's seven right for ilts uh seven i i think it depends on the university mm, okay yeah uh there are some universities that also seven for each component or seven for only uh, yeah. Yeah, whole, uh, yeah. point, a whole point or six point five is still acceptable for a specific component. So I think it depends on the university. All but right. usually for PhD, it's uh, seven. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. So um. This is a very uh interesting question from Sahizami Putra. Can you elaborate how to maintain your mental stability during your PhD journey? For our four years, four uh, years. <laughs> it's difficult to answer. Mm, I always have a uh, time for myself, so I mean it doesn't have to be a big action. Uh, what what should I do for maintaining or uh, ensuring that I uh, have good well being uh, for the next three years or four years? But it's just a small action. Make sure that you separate your work and uh, life uh, matters. I mean, you have to apply work-life balance. It's it's really applicable in the Netherlands, so you, you don't have to worry about this. Uh, and you can, uh, I mean, if already if it's already on weekend, just take a rest. You don't have to work. Uh, so it's small action, but it matters because if you push yourself too hard, when you work up, on Monday morning, you will drain. You will feel drained, and you don't have energy to start the week. And then you will be you will be not productive for the whole week. So it's better to spend two days for rest, taking rest, doing activities that making you uh, feeling better, uh, happier, 
and then ready to get to work again on the on weekdays. And please keep in mind that also you don't have to be productive all all days all the time. So it's totally fine if you feel tired and you want to stop for a while, because yeah, it's it's really I mean it's really reasonable to to have feeling like this. So just like a small actions that uh to make sure that you 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 prioritize your well being as well. So it's okay. only small actions. Yeah. So so Medina, um, I'm I'm just curious, what are um normally PhD students do at the weekend? For refreshing, <laughs> um, maybe go to the market. Okay. Go to because yeah, uh, visit other friends in other cities, and actually I live in Groningen, the northern part in the Netherlands. So weekend is usually, I mean, I have to use this weekend only two days to meet new people, meet uh, visit new places outside Groningen. So I don't have, so I don't, uh, so I didn't feel socially excluded in north part of the Netherlands because it's far from anywhere <laughs> from other cities so yeah it's, it's really important to catch up with your friends in other cities as well and my friends are also usually only taking a nap just enjoy the day slow living on the weekend doesn't have to do anything so yeah just do it or just do what you want what what you think it will make you feel recharged okay yeah Okay, um, our back to the chat box. Uh, another okay. questions. Uh, another question are coming from is coming from St Selfie Stephanie. Is it possible to finish the PhD program earlier than it should be? Uh, yeah, it's possible. My supervisor from ITB that graduated from the University of Groningen only finished his PhD in three years, so it's possible. Uh, yeah, it's possible, but. But maybe uh you have to work harder for that because complete uh finishing PhD in four years is all already a big challenge. But and then you you will you want to make it shorter. Yeah, it means you have to work harder. But it's possible actually. Okay, I think it's also similar with the question from Yolanda Fitria Shahri. According to you, person Netherlands can be finished in four years because a lot of people that I know cannot finish their PhD in four years. Uh yeah, uh finishing PhD less than four years years is rare uh rare thing in the Netherlands I guess, and yeah most people maybe finish it uh after five or six years, but it doesn't mean that it's not in it's not possible to do it within yeah. four years. Yeah. it's possible if you can communicate everything that you have to tell to your supervisors. I mean, if you have a personal circumstances such as you have to work uh, after you finish your PhD because you have to support your family or something like that and you have to finish it after four years, maybe you can tell the uh, supervisors my condition or maybe you have a job contract or something like that. So you can communicate with it between your with your supervisors and they can help you to finish it within four years. But still, the most important keep uh is you as a phd student so they will help you but you 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 also have to show or demonstrate strong ability to commit it uh fi finish it within four years okay. that makes sense yeah um nurwanti april learning room uh, wrote um she admires your past a uh, very brave decision to shift from your job then going back to the academician path through the double degree project her question is how did you then do that and decide that major life shift uh okay um actually i was uh, since i was in bachelor program i already interested to become uh, or to work in academia path so that's why i took a fast track program uh so it's the joint program between masters and bachelors. And after that, I work for the university as well. So I already have a fixed plan that I would like to work for the academia path. But in 2021, something unexpected happened that requires me to work uh, outside the academia uh, path. But after almost one year, I realized that working in non-academia path is not something that I like, it's not something that I enjoy, even though maybe you can get uh, 
something better. Uh, I mean, you 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 can get more experiences working outside the academia. It yeah, as uh, it's open your new connections as well because you go from you 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 did you you don't work for the one place as uh, only. But I realized that it's not something that I like. It it's not something that I enjoy. So I decided, okay, let's get back to my initial plan, working in the academia path. So it's as simple as it's not as simple as that, but yeah, I can tell in a summary, it's it's only back to an initial plan that I already have since I was in a bachelor's program. Okay. Um Maulana and Samuel Kambil um uh, ask, do you think that it's possible to engage with potential supervisor? To prepare for your research plan, do you have any advice to prepare for a good research plan? Um, based on my experience, it's it it will be better if you already have uh, initial ideas, uh, to discuss it with your your potential supervisors, uh, and ask them, uh, what's your opinion? What's it? What do you think about this idea? But it doesn't mean that you don't have any idea, and then you ask, uh. I maybe you, you can just say uh, I have an idea like this. What do you think about it? Yeah, I think it 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 shouldn't be like this. Uh, I mean, you still have to work on a proposal, initial proposal, showing what you already read, what you already understand, what you try to fill in the gap, and what 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 you will try to do in the four years. But it's not a fixed plan, so you can uh so it's like a proposed idea to the potential supervisors, but it's not asking, uh. I mean, you don't come to the, your potential supervisor without anything. You you still have to uh, prepare something that showing that you already try to work on this issue. And advice, any advice to prepare for a good research plan? Um, have someone as a mentor to guide you to have a discussion. It can be your your preliminary supervisor or prior supervisor from the university, from bachelor or masters. Or it can be PhD students that working on this field, uh, that's the same field with your research interest. So you can uh, have a discussion, you can you can exchange your ideas uh, with them or with him or with her. So that's, uh, that's from my experience. Okay. Um, uh, so Medina, um, living in the Netherlands already a year, right? Uh, yeah. What do you like the most? living in the Netherlands? Uh, they don't have traffic jam. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and they really prioritize uh, well-being of PhD students. <laughs> they really, uh, I mean, uh, applying work-life balance is a must in the Netherlands. So you, you don't feel guilty if you, okay, taking day off during weekends because sometimes in Indonesia, I feel like, I feel guilty if I don't work on weekends, but why I do feel guilty because it's 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 public holiday, it's weekends, but why I feel guilty? I feel guilty. Maybe it's um, uh, surrounding environments, surrounding environments affect on this condition, but yeah, being a PhD student in the Netherlands uh open my open new experiences for me that okay, you you still can be a good PhD student without uh working on the weekend. <laughs> So yeah, something like that. Okay. Uh I think this is the last question from the chat box. Uh hi Dina. Um this is Deka from SAP PK twenty fifteen. You must know her maybe. Or yeah, her. she's my so proud of your accomplishment. <laughs> I wonder if you may share about the way you combine the disciplines of your degrees from your bachelor, master, and your PhD to your current project. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Deka, for joining this session. Uh, actually, I have um, shifting research interest in uh, from the bachelor to masters because at first, uh, my thesis of for bachelor's program is about city branding. It's totally different with the master's program thesis, which is about rural rural development issues. And for the doctoral program, I also focus on the rural development issues. But how I combine all all these uh, disciplines. It's more likely focused on your skills that you gain from from your every uh, academic uh, yeah from your uh, disciplines 
from bachelor to master from to and then to doctoral program it's about critical thinking and uh, systematic uh, thinking as well uh, it helps you to find uh, or to acknowledge what should be uh, what's the feel, what's the gap knowledge of these uh, issues and what can i contribute so it's not only about uh, your ideas your topic but it's also about your skills from bachelor to master to doctor that help you to identify uh, the, the the novelty of your research so uh, that's from my experience okay so the last question is coming from me <laughs> uh, we will conduct the PhD recruitment, as I mentioned earlier, um, yeah. next week, uh, October 7th. Uh, so the the people who are invited uh, to this event will have a chance to discuss their ideas, proposals, research proposals with the delegates from the Dutch uh, institutions. Do you have any advices or recommendations or tips to them if one of them are here? Uh, how to how to enjoy the interview how to impress the delegates okay mm, yeah making good impression at first meeting is really important and i guess uh some recommendations or maybe some tips that can be useful for uh for you that coming to the recruitment is uh you have to prepare uh, your how you deliver your ideas in short uh, duration because they don't I I think people a recruitment people a re recruitment even uh, doesn't have long time I mean it's only one day right yeah and you, and they will talk with uh, with many people so make it clear what will you talk about what we, uh why did you choose the university because if you tell about this reason they will notice oh this uh, this person already do, did a research background uh, about our university and they and you also can ask about what's ongoing program on the university to find any opportunities if you can get a position there and if you still haven't got any funding just make it clear you don't have any funding yet and you're looking for potential collaboration or potential uh, scholarship from the university in the Netherlands. Uh, and tell about your uh, related experiences related to your topics, uh, if you have any related uh, prior experiences related on your research topic. And make it clear di directly, not so, uh, because I think people will really appreciate it if you say, what you what you really want what you really need and what you're uh, asking for them so that that's for i think i hope it can be useful for you all right so everyone if you are interested to join a phd recruitment this year uh, or if you already registered but haven't completed all the necessary information hurry up Hurry over the website and finish your application today because tomorrow is the deadline. Okay. So, Medina, we have to come to the end of our session. It's really nice. It's really nice having discussion with you. Thank you for sharing your experience and answering the, the questions. Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me for having discussions. Uh, I really hope that my session can be insightful uh, for all people that joining the session and good luck for all uh, participants that we are try to pursue a PhD. Best of luck for us. And yeah. Yeah, I good luck with your PhD, Medina. And thank, thank you, you uh, to everyone for being here today and listening to our session. Don't miss our next session tomorrow with another interesting guest. Um, so good evening for everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye.